Who walked with you? Well, I think different people, you know? And people crop up uh, at times and you think, well, I haven't seen them for years, but you remember that it might have been a brief moment over a boiling billy in the bush, or it might have been 20 minutes with somebody who was totally unknown in a cafe or on a train when you're traveling. And suddenly you were in a situation that was receptive to who was there. Or it, you may have been sitting like we are on a rock and suddenly you are entirely receptive to what's given to you around you. Mm. And you know that uh, you are not necessarily trying to do anything at that stage. Mm. So the more we try and force the horse to water, the less it's likely to drink is the old adage. Um, and uh, it's a very fine balance, isn't it, between actually prodding somebody or prodding yourself to solve an issue, solve something, to heal yourself, whatever. Uh, and it's a fine line between that and just letting things come into you. Yeah. I'm just thinking as you speak, you know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling this um, connection with you. I'm feeling this connection with myself as you speak and I can feel the, you know, I can feel the emotion rising. And um, when the truth is spoken, when I feel it, it touches me deeply. And I'm thinking of the brushing together, you know, of, of, the, of the plants here that you've spoken about. And I've brushed by you mm. and I feel, I feel enriched from that. And I feel, I just feel the truth when it's yeah. spoken and it's beautiful to hear because it, what is it that connects, what is it that connects us together? What is it that, that creates the connections between us when we really share, when we feel like, you know, to feel into your experiences, to, to, to share what you have, to share something of your personal journey. It's, it, it touches me at a deep level because you, something opens within me as you open. Well, you see, this is the, the, the beauty of recognizing different processes in nature and yourself. Sometimes you have to really try hard. You sometimes have to try hard to reach that mountain peak. You sometimes have to try hard to work something out. It might be digging your garden, but in the process you come to a period of rest. And the rest period is just as important as the trying hard period. The rest period is just as important as the work. Because in rest itself, there's another sort of work going on that is is very important. Mm. That's so true. And, and uh, unless you have the rest, you cannot expect to do good work. Yeah. That is so important. Now, one of the big mountains out there I took my boys out to only two weeks ago. And it's not the highest one, but it's the, uh, it's on the left of the very big valley where the cliffs you can see in the background and you go up and up and up to the left and there's several little bumps. Mm. It's one of those peaks there. Mm. And uh, that was the first time they'd been up there. And it's a quite a long haul up there from the, the valley below. Um, but when, you got, when we got to the top, we just sat down on the top of the mountain on the rocks there and we ate and drank and we rested. Yeah. And all the fun of walking up there just went quiet suddenly for a bit. Yeah. And that was that beautiful moment that a lot of mountaineers describe when you hit the, the top of the mountain. There's rest and relief and recognition. Rest, <laughs> relief and recognition. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. But there's other R's too and there's respect as well. Yeah. So by the work that you've done to reach the top of the mountain, to do something, to dig the garden and grow the spuds. There's respect for the earth in doing that. And there's respect for human life. Yes. So it's through really practical work, just like you reach a, climbing up a mountain, that you have respect. 
for that place. Mm. And, and the fear goes away in the process. Because mm. uh, mountaineers describe the fear. They, you know, everybody thinks they these great mountaineers don't have any fear. Yes, they do. If they didn't have fear, they wouldn't have adventure. They wouldn't be able to climb the mountain. Yes. You must have that fear. Yes. Wow. That's fear more t of death, fear of genuine death. Yes. You know, it's not it's not fear of a, a imagined death. You're standing on an ice or a rock precipice, and any moment now it could slide out from underneath you if it's yeah. ice and snow. Yeah. Or you might take a step and tumble, and that's it. But that fear keeps you g'd up and aware of this moment in time. Yeah. And this moment in time is ultimately the most moment of value. Yeah. Because it's it's right now. So true. So yeah. true. The present moment. Yeah. And yeah. it's right now I see that the clouds have passed in the landscape and they've <laughs> now speckled the landscape with a different pattern. Yeah. Um, and, and that to me is beautiful too.